Want a quick way to beat the heat this summer? Well, stay tuned because today I'm sharing four of the best summer crock pot meals you've ever had. Hey y'all, I'm Sammy and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm gonna to be sharing four of the easiest jump and go summer crock pot meals you have ever had in your entire life. I know that might be a little bit drastic, but that's what I'm claiming. So if you are here for all the deliciousness, keep watching and let's get to cooking. Grab you some sweet tea, sit back and relax, and let me do all the cooking. Come on y'all, let's go. Let's kick off this video with ravioli lasagna or lazy lasagna, whatever you wanna call it. Just don't call it anything but delicious. So this is everything you're gonna need. And first, we're going to start out by making the cheese mixture. So I have one block of cream cheese here, and y'all know me by now, or if you're new, we are a garlic loving family. So I put about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of garlic in there with about 12 ounces of cottage cheese, the full fat cottage cheese, and about eight ounces of sour cream. Now this makes a small crock pot, you'll see it here in a minute, probably about a four, three to four quart crock pot. And then I put in one cup of mozzarella cheese and we're gonna give that a good old stir together. But we are gonna season that up just a little bit um, with some Badia Complete. You could use Italian seasoning or nature seasoning if you don't have the Badia Complete. You just wanna make sure that you give that another good mix just to make sure all those seasonings are well combined. Now into your crock pot, you will take about a quarter cup of the sauce and a quarter cup of water. This is gonna be the very bottom layer into a sprayed crock pot. Then you will get your bag of beef ravioli or cheese ravioli. You could use it either way. I do have a meat sauce that I already had frozen from the last time I made my spaghetti. So once you have your sauce in there, you'll put one layer of the ravioli down. Then you will cover that again in some sauce. I just kind of placed it sporadically in the bottom. It don't need to be all over it because it's going to cook and it's going to get all nice and yummy. Once you have the sauce put on the ravioli, you'll want to go ahead and just cover that in another layer of cheese. I just put little bitty dollops on there. And now we're just going to repeat those layers until you get to the very top. <laughs> now this is the very top layer. Once you have your final um, layer of sauce and cheese, we're gonna put some more mozzarella, cause mo cheese, mo better. <laughs> I think I'm gonna make that into a saying of mine. And then you will put about three to four ounces of Parmesan cheese right on top of that. Put your lid on your crock pot, set this on low, and let it cook for about four to six hours. Just keep an eye on it. This was probably at the five hour mark right here. I just took my little rubber spatula thing, scraped down the sides of it, and went ahead and served that right on up. And y'all will see all this deliciousness coming up right here. It does not burn. That's why I said to make sure you have a well sprayed crock pot. And of course, to serve it up, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit more Parmesan and some more of parsley flakes or basil. I think I use basil right here. And this is what we had for supper this night. So y'all definitely make sure y'all give this one a try. And if you're liking what you're seeing so far, go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up and leave me a comment below and think about hitting that subscribe button because I would absolutely love to have y'all as part of my YouTube family. Moving right on along, we're gonna make a teriyaki pineapple chicken. And trust me, y'all don't want to miss this one. This is definitely delicious, quick, simple, and easy, but definitely fills up them bellies. So into a sprayed three to four quart crock pot, you will go ahead and put some diced up chicken in here. Now I do mine in layers. So once I have that first layer of chicken, I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle it with this Badia adobo seasoning. I'm gonna go ahead and put that second layer of that diced up chicken chopped up chicken. You could even do like chicken strips or you can do whole chicken breast if you want to. Once you have your chicken in there and you have it seasoned, you will put in one eight ounce um, can of pineapple juice. You will put a whole 
I think it's a 12 or a 15 ounce bottle of the teriyaki sauce and then a quarter cup of brown sugar along with some minced garlic or jarlic. Now, jarlic <laughs> is a little bit less potent than fresh garlic, of course. So you can, you know, go heavier all night if you choose to, but we love garlic here. So I put about two tablespoons in there, put that on low for about four hours and then that was cooked perfectly and all i'm going to do is just go ahead and chop up that chicken just a little bit because we're going to serve this over some white rice with some steamed broccoli and of course y'all know i've got to put a little bit more of that teriyaki glaze right on top of it because it is delicious and then we are going to put some green onions and some sesame seeds right on top of it and this makes for the perfect summer supper Oh my goodness, I cannot rave enough about this. It was absolutely perfect. Definitely give this one a try. You won't be disappointed, I promise. Now this one is right up my alley and I don't know about you all, but summertime means barbecue for me. And if you don't wanna put it on the grill, this is a quick and easy way to have supper done in a jiffy. So into a large eight quart crock pot, it is sprayed already. We're gonna go ahead and put about a quarter cup of some chicken broth down in the bottom. And we're gonna season up our chicken legs on one side and that seasoned side is gonna go down in the crock pot, as y'all could see right there. I'm just gonna go ahead and try to, you know, maneuver those chicken legs around where I can get them all to fit in. <laughs> then I am seasoning it up with some Holy Smokes, some Badia Complete and the Buttery Poultry Blend by Kinders. Those are the three seasonings I'm using Using. and then we will go ahead with the second layer right here and we're going to do the same thing on top so we're starting off with that Badia complete the holy smokes did holy smokes blend by Badia, and then the poultry blend by kinders now i do put barbecue sauce in there as i'm cooking it but i don't like put a ton of it in there because once i get home i take these chicken legs out and we'll put them on a bacon sheet so i just like to give it enough barbecue sauce to where it just kind of coats down over all of the chicken and you get that barbecue flavor because like I said, I love to cook down the chicken legs on in the oven. So the lid gets put on this and it gets cooked on low for six hours. And they are perfectly fall apart tender, as y'all can see right here. I did have a little bit of trouble with the bones kind of wanting to break, but that is to be expected. But I just put those under the broiler just to let that barbecue sauce get nice and sticky and a little bit you know, browned, if you want to say that. And I just serve that up with my baked beans and my potato salad, which both recipes will be linked down below, as well as a recipe for the crock pot barbecue chicken. If y'all love this video as much as I have making it for y'all, please give me a subscribe and a like and leave me a comment down below. I absolutely love y'all and I thank y'all for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. And last but not least, I cannot leave out these beef tips and gravy. Y'all, these were absolutely delicious. And this is all you're going to need to make them. Now, you could use whatever beef you wanted, but I did um, a sirloin tip. And I think I did some beef tips as well. So into a sprayed crock pot, I'm just going to start out with just some sliced up onions. And then here are the little sirloin tip steaks and then the beef tips themselves. Now this was sent to me by ButcherBox. I will always have a link down below in my description box if y'all want to try ButcherBox out. This video is not sponsored by them. I do have a sponsored video, but I just love to share it because their meat is fantastic. So once you have that first layer of meat in here, I'm going to go ahead and season that up with my Kinder's all-purpose seasoning and then the caramelized onion butter. Y'all, y'all need to go and get y'all some Kinder's seasoning. They are so, so good. They are absolutely delicious. I have not had not one seasoning that I did not like. <laughs> so definitely get y'all some Kinder seasoning. And so next up, we're going to go ahead and take a brown gravy packet and a Lipton onion soup mix. It's the beefy onion flavor into one cup of water. Yep, one cup of water. You could even use beef broth in this if you wanted to. 
but I just put both packets of that into my mixing cup and I'm just going to give that a good old stir together just to make sure everything is well combined and then we'll pour that right over these beef tips. Oh y'all, the smell of this when I got home was amazing so the lid gets put on this and you can cook this for as long as you want to i did mine on low for about seven and a half hours total when i got home as y'all could see right here oh my goodness i cannot rave about this enough it was so so good and of course you gotta take a taste test and i cannot rave enough about this butcher box beef it is so good I did take it out of the crock pot though so I could thicken up that sauce a little bit more than what a cornstarch slurry would into the crock pot um, because we were going to serve this over mashed taters and stuff. So I wanted to make sure it was just a little bit thicker and that's why I went ahead and cooked that on the stove top. I did use a cornstarch slurry but sometimes you know you need stuff done just a little bit faster in the evenings so why not just dump it into the skillet and let that get nice and thick but here it is right over the mashed potatoes and then i went ahead and served that up with some green beans and y'all this was such a rib sticking belly filling meals it was delicious now let's get to the best part of the video which are my bloopers y'all because y'all know i'm famous for them Hey y'all, I'm Sammy and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be sharing four quick and easy dump and go crock pot meals that won't heat up your kitchen, which in my opinion is all about. <sighs> hey, hey y'all, my name, <laughs> oh, <a> little bit. <laughs> I'll eventually get this right. Mm -hmm. Was that saying Gru's Faba <laughs> from the movie Anger Management? Oh, no, my eyes are going to itch. Had to give my dog some food so they would stay quiet because it's 7.23. I leave for work at 7.30 in the morning, and I still got to walk them. <sighs> See if I can get it done this time. I don't even remember what take this was. All right, y'all, that is it for today's video. I truly, truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, and make sure you give me thumbs ups, leave me a comment below, and you see that little red subscribe button right there? Go ahead and mash that button and set your bell notifications to all so you never miss another video that I post. If you are in need of prayer, please let me know down below, and I would be honored to pray for you all. And if you need some more crock pot meals or summer recipes, Make sure you check out these other two videos right here on your screen. And until next time, God bless. Bye.